Hello everyone and welcome back to a new video. It has been some time since my last upload as I have had some very busy times. Today I want to show the progress I have made on my old mini lathe. In my spare time I have finally made an enclosure for the lathe and finished up some other tasks as well to make the lathe actually usable. I also got some useful add-ons for this lathe. I purchased a quick change tool post that looks rather big for the size of lathe, but it should work out perfectly. One drawback being that I can't install it on top of the compound slide, as it would be too high. But seeing how often I use the compound slide, I don't think it will be a problem. The only thing left to do now before I can install the tool post is making an adapter plate to mount the tool post onto the cross slide. I also got a vertical milling support that will enable me to do some milling with the lathe. I also need to adapt it to the cross slide but I will save that for a later video as I need to figure out some stuff first. Speaking about milling, I am planning to continue my milling machine build as well, so stay tuned for that. Today I want to install some 3D printed parts in my lathe enclosure. I printed several different parts using my Ender 3 V2 printer that will improve workflow and tool organization a lot. First let me install them quickly before showing what their purpose is in case you did not figure it out already. One of the 3D printed parts is made to hold 3 MC2 tapers for drill chucks and my life center. I also printed 4 parts that can hold my quick change tool holders, which would make them tool holder holders I guess. Some of the 3D printed parts are a little tight, so I have to address that at some point as well, but at least they won't be rattling around. The last 3D printed part holds my lathe chuck key and quick change tool holder key, which tend to disappear when you store them on a tabletop or in a toolbox. The mechanical part of the lathe has not really changed since you last saw it, although I have found some serious problems. When taking a light depth of cut, the surface finish looks decent, but when changing to a larger depth of cut, things start to go downhill. Although the lathe has plenty of power, the surface finish is messed up, indicating that something is moving while it is not supposed to move. To clearly show the problem, I will put an indicator on the part I just turned. The indicator is reading way too much up and down movement, but this isn't just from the main bearings in the spindle. I am holding the round bar and the chuck with a previously turned surface, which now appears to be quite a significant taper, enabling it to move freely up and down in the chuck jaws, to some extent. To give a clear view of the real problem, I will change the setup to get rid of the tapered part moving in the chuck jaws. Right now you can see the amount of play in the spindle bearings of the lathe. The lathe uses bronze bushings that are either worn out or they don't have the right tolerance resulting in half a millimeter or 20 thou of free play. I have been thinking about this problem for a bit and I have found two solutions. One solution is removing the spindle bearing and reinstalling new bushings, although this would keep the machine correct to the period in which it was produced. I want to choose for the second option, which includes removing the headstock, which bolts onto the bed 
and creating a new headstock with tape drawer bearings in order to remove most of the runout and end up with a much better spindle setup. If I ever wanted to change back the machine to the original setup, I can just remove the headstock and exchange it with the original one. Right now I am going to start working on the headstock design and I will keep you updated once I can start making it. By the way I have put some hours on the welder I got last time and it is still going strong. I changed the tick torch to my preferences and I like it much better now. For now I want to thank you for watching. Please consider subscribing or leaving a like or comment. It helps me to put out videos more frequently. See you again next time.